after the news that an incoming Labour government would in a sense legitimise the lottery, the lottery being an appeal to our more material instincts, comes an initiative designed to bring spirituality into our lives. The Sacred Land Project was launched by the Archbishop of Canterbury to the sound of Tibetan horns. It aims to restore and conserve more than 2,000 sacred sites, many of them almost forgotten, all over Britain. Only the unusually unobservant passerby could fail to notice the very large Hindu temple that adorns a corner of Wilsdon in North London. It's a sacred site that demands to be noticed. But around the corner, the local parish church has been demanding some of the attention. Representatives of eight religions, including the Archbishop of Canterbury, were there to launch the Sacred Land Project. A procession of religious folk and conservationists filed towards the site of an old well, once a medieval shrine to a long-forgotten woman known as the Black Virgin of Wilsdon. The project is all about reviving old spiritual sites and creating new ones. Let me take Canterbury Cathedral. Canterbury Cathedral sits in the middle of a really quite boring plain. There's nothing inherently sacred about where Canterbury Cathedral is. It is sacred because it was built to be sacred, because people went there intending to do something different from what was being done all around them. Now that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking spaces and we're saying, this isn't going to be a shopping mall, this isn't going to be a car park, this isn't going to be for business or even necessarily for housing. This is going to be a place where you can actually meet God, whoever and whatever you understand that to be. As we look around, many different religions... Inside the church, the Archbishop tried to pin down exactly what the advantages of the new sacred sites might be. What more specifically are some of the rich gifts which sacred sites have to offer? Well, they help us to recapture that vital sense of reverence, linked to an acknowledgement of mysteries which we cannot and should not hope to rationalise or control. The project organisers promise that by the time they've finished, everyone will live within 10 miles of a sacred site. In the economically depressed town of Wigton in southwest Scotland, there will be a sacred garden, reflecting the influence of the Celtic saints. The pilgrim route to the monastery at Whithorn on the Galloway Peninsula has already been extensively restored. And in Manchester, residents of a rundown estate in West Withington are to get a specially created path of life, featuring two huge rocks engraved with names of people connected with the local church. The old moat estate in the city used to have a church on the site where the path of life is now planned, but it was built on sand and fell down. Reaction from residents to the new religious offering was mixed. I wish they would uh, use it for, uh, you know, for something more dynamic. I think it'll be a good idea because there's loads of young children around here that have got nowhere to go and nothing to do. It'll give a place for people to come, but sadly it might be vandalised. Well, I'd rather it had been developed into um, a church and uh, with facilities for the children to play in. They have nothing. Thanks for the joined us. It's a privilege to welcome you here. Nationwide, the project is not meeting with unquestioning support. Critics see it as further evidence that religious leaders are out of touch with the real needs of communities. If you live on a run-down estate in Manchester that was built in the 30s and you're deprived of amenities and the schooling's bad and the employment uh, opportunities are awful, what you're most looking for isn't a pathway of life, but you're looking for real jobs and real hope. The organisers say that more and more people are looking for spiritualism in their everyday lives and the Sacred Land Project is meeting their demands. <laughs>